Max sent me an email uh, earlier this week, but you said, could you please give me some hints or make a discussion about a comparison between a standard calendar collar, which is what we were kind of just looking at. By a calendar collar means buying the put farther out in time, selling the near-term call. And he says August 2nd, 24th, and January 17th, 25th, and a calendar call the same month and same strike. He's interested in how to get the same dollar amount as max profit, same max risk, same profit region, but using much less capital. Can we say that given the same profit and loss profile, risk reward, and also profit region, the calendar call is more convenient? Max, you can say that based on your portfolio because you want to use less money. These two are not parity trades of one another. They have a similar risk reward profile, just like a long call has a similar looking risk reward profile to a married put. We, we never argue that. We never deny that. The long call by itself looks like the married put profit and loss. So why not just use long calls? Because it's cheaper. Because what I just mentioned in part of the discussion with Ram, single digit risk on the dynamic collar versus risking 100% of what you put into the calendar call spread. Let me show you why. Max gave me an example. And let's change the view. I apologize. We're going to go back to power options. I put these into the portfolio. All right. You gave me two examples in BA. I'm sorry. It wasn't here. This is in married put talk. I want that one. Calendar call versus what's called a horizontal spread. Max, calendar calls, uh, the same strike is a horizontal spread. It's different strikes would be a diagonal spread or poor man's covered call kind of approach in that case. Long collar, Bank of America. Yesterday, the other day, it was closed at $39.99. He sent me the email saying, what if I did the at the money, sold just the 42, 43 day out, August 40 call, which is at 145. Same call we're going to use in our calendar, horizontal, same strike spread. But I bought an at the money January 40 put at 259. Okay, so this is a dynamic collar, same strike put, but further out in time. And we've got, again, a controlled max risk. Okay, $112 or 2.7% of, I'm sorry, $4,112 we'd have to invest into this position. Okay, max return is 138. Okay, let's call it 139 or 3.4%. Fantastic. Now, let's see. I'm sorry. I just want to do one thing here. I want that. Don't want that. There we go. And I'm, I'm just cleaning up some of the tabs here so it's easier to view, folks. Just one second and boom. Okay. Great. Now, profit and loss chart here. Did I not put that price in right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the call was at 335. That was right. Okay, so the 40 call, just slightly out of the money, when this, or at the money, the January 40 call was at 335, and the 40 call selling again was 145, same as before. Okay, sorry about that. Now, similar risk reward profile that we saw. Okay, it's not sort of picture in picture, but it's close. So oh, there we go. The risk reward profile is similar. Upper break even 3714, lower break even, I'm sorry, 3714 to 4430 with compared to the calendar with 3797 and upper break even of 4274. Similar risk reward profile. Now in this case though, the maximum profit on the calendar call is a little bit lower. It's around 102 instead of 112. Yeah, just a $10 difference. And the max risk is at 190 instead of 139. So it's a higher risk, lower profit potential, well, monetarily. But percentage-wise, hey, I can make 53.3%. I can make 101 against an investment of 190 instead of 4,112. But you can also lose 100% of this investment. Unlikely, but if Bank of America here, this is the calendar call, the horizontal call, if Bank of America fell down to 
28, $27, $26, your long call here is going to be diminishing in price very quickly. Sure, your short call is expiring worthless. You keep that full 145, but this is losing most of its value at the same time. And that's your investment now, not the stock. Your investment's in the long call that's further out in time. Now, I know you know that, Max. I'm just trying to stipulate. So let's say that even you know, right towards expiration, something happens with the market. BAC goes down to $26. Oh, let's say, yeah, out to expiration there. Let's go to 715 or closer to it. So yeah, I'm at a loss of 188. <laughs> it's pretty much near 100% of one. And that's a significant drop, I understand. That's what that's a 33% drop, isn't it? $13 down to 26. Yeah, so we're looking at a 33% decline. Probably not going to happen in Bank of America in the next 30 days. And if it does, we might have some bigger problems on our hands than what we're seeing in the stock market. But that is a bigger problem we want to handle. This is what comes down to the lie of leverage. In the same relation that we were just discussing with Ram's question, we saw that married put right now. If I bought NVIDIA at 126 and bought the 130 put, it was a 10.5% potential risk on the position. Now, let's call it 10%. Okay. Now, I got 10% there. I've got 100% here. No, I'm sorry. Strike that reverse. Let's do that again. I got a 10, I'm putting 10% up there and I'm going to put, um, okay, the 50 there. All right. So 10 and 50 here. Okay. So if I have a 10% loss on a position, do I need 10% to get back to break even? No, I need 11.1%. I had $10,000, lost 10%. I'm down to 9,000. I need to make 11.1% on that 9,000 to get back to 10%. If I take a 25% loss on a position, I go down to 7,500. What do I need to get back to break even? I need 2,500 to get back to 10,000. I need a 33% gain to get back to break even. And the 33% loss, I go down to 6,700. How do I get back to 10,000? I need a 50% gain to get back to break even with a 33% loss. And if I have a 50% loss, I need a 100% gain on what I have remaining, that $5,000, to get back. This is the lie of leverage in action. Now, if I take a 5% loss on a position, do I need just divide by 10? I just need a 10% gain. I need a 10% gain to get back to break even. No, I only need a 5.3% gain to get back to break even. Gambler's ruin. This is where people start to make mistakes, is that you need to control the risk to single digits. Now, Max, there's a way to do that with this leverage structure that risks 100% of what you invest in the trade. You can only do it with a smaller portion of your portfolio. Um, you can do it with things of that nature. And of course, the argument that Max is making or the concern that Max is making is, look, I can make almost the same amount here, $102 max profit with just investing 190, but I'm risking 100% of that 190. But then we go ahead and say, okay, well, at the same time, the standard, the same similar looking structure of the same strike dynamic collar cost me 4,000 to get into. And I'm only risking 112 instead of 190. But that's only 2.7% of what I invest in the position. I'm still making $138 uh, versus $102 on the other one, but that's only 3.4% compared to 53% against my investment. That calendar collar is superior. That calendar call horizontal spread is superior is what Max is saying. Our argument is it's not unless you're careful. In addition to that lie of leverage, you can't allow the losses to go to 40 50% because it's going to consistently wipe out your portfolio and you're going to have much less to trade. But whenever someone brings me one of these comparisons, are you leveraging your money and trying to make higher returns percentage wise on the leverage? Yes, you are. I get it. Even when I started, when I started with about $2,200, I was doing covered calls on smaller positions and then trying to buy calls here and there uh, to try to get leveraged profits. And some of them hit, some of them didn't. But when I get these questions, you know, someone says, well, the calendar call is superior because I only put up 190 to get into the position to make 
close to the same profit, a little bit less, and have maybe a little bit more maximum risk in this case due to volatility of the calls or whatever it is, but I'm only using 190 instead of 41 or 4100. And then I realize how this investor is going to get hurt. They're not comparing apples to apples. If that investor and I had the same portfolio, portfolio value, say $100,000. And right now, for whatever reason, we both had $4,000, $4,500 to invest in a new position. And I said, I'm doing BAC with this structure, not the structure I would use for Mary Put, as we already discussed during Ram's discussion, but you get it. I'm going to use this structure. And of my $4,500, I'm going to use $4,100 in capital on one position. I'm going to leave the other you know, $390, $400 aside for potential adjustments or, or maybe something else, maybe a lottery ticket on a long call, who knows. But the most I can lose on this in the absolute worst case scenario is $112 or 3.4%. Okay. And we're saying that, yeah, but comparative wise, you can do better with this position. Ram, Max, I'm sorry, you and I have the same portfolio, $100,000 account, $4,500 in free capital. Are you going to trade one contract of this position? You can trade one contract of that calendar spread with the 4,500 free that you have? No. You're going to trade five contracts of that, and you're going to be risking, um, what is that, $45, $950, okay, as a potential max risk. I know you're not going to let that happen, but your max risk in the calendar, you did five contracts there. Then you're going to do seven contracts on possibly another position that's going to risk about another $1,000 or so, potential maximum loss on the trade, a stock ABC, and maybe three contracts of a calendar spread or another leverage position where the maximum risk is $600 on stock XYZ. And then of course, maybe another four contracts where you're going to be risking possibly $1,100, let's say, on stock one, two, three. I can only lose $112 or 3.4% of the 4,500 I had invested. You're at 22 3150 $3,950 at risk. And you have an, but just like, like me, excuse me, uh, Max, you have an upper and lower break even where you could lose on this side or you can lose on this side with a large unexpected movement. This is where that, that, that battle always comes in. The three core principles I mentioned of radioactive trading, which is a similar to a radioactive trade. It's a dynamic collar. It's very similar to radioactive trade. But we talked about, you know, briefly the at the money bell curve. We want to be selling here where the time value is the highest and buying on the outer wings when it's lowest. That dictates we want to be going in the money. The decay line of options decay, you know, so options that are 250 days out are here, 125 maybe are here, 90 is here, and then 60, 30. That's where the time value really starts to decay out. Okay. So that's why I'm buying the put 250 days out or so for slower time decay in that first 160 days or so, where if I just buy the cheaper 60 day out, I watch that time value road rapidly. And the third core principle, it's really the first core principle, but the third one I didn't mention is calling FIST, force an ideal size trade. This form of a married put, it is a married put, but this form of dynamic call a married put is forcing me into an ideal size trade. It's forcing me only to risk two, three, four, five percent of the money I have to invest, rather than investing in five or six different positions where I'm risking close to 25 to 30 percent of the 4,500 I had to invest into each one, and in an adverse market condition, I can get destroyed or hurt very badly. Okay, so <laughs> that's that's with that concept. Um, yeah, you you just said it. You can. With the 4,000 cost, I save using calendar call. I can open many more positions with much higher potential of profit, um, uh, higher. Um, and not trading more contracts, same dollar amount, but using more positions. Same thing, whether you trade more contracts or whether you trade multiple positions, even if you did 10 positions with one contract, you can still watch that erode. That's the lie of leverage in action. As careful as you are in saying, oh, but if I'm in... 12 positions or 15 positions only risking uh, 190 or $200, that only forces me to trade $3,000 or be at risk of $3,000, you're still risking three-fourths potentially of what you had to invest at the time. And that's where we get stuck. Even if you close those at 
your portfolio is still down 35, 40%, right? You know, if I opened, uh, you know, 15 positions, as I mentioned, all with that $2 monetary risk, got $3,000 at risk. You know, I lose 75% of that in an adverse market condition, you know, you're still down. And even if you, you stop them early and you cut the losses, you're still down 25, 35, 40% of that 3,000. I've only lost 112. That's that's where it comes in. Now, I do have an upward lower break even too, same as you. So if the BAC or the market really took off, and no, we're not expecting BAC to have a large 10, 15, 20% movement. That's the lie of leverage, Max. That's what we always mention when we're talking about it. If we both had 4,500, you say you're going to be dynamic and you're going to trade more of those lower cost spreads for the chance for higher potential profit and also more chance of higher potential losses or having only 50% winners where you're just at a wash. Could I just have a wash with this one if it doesn't move? Potentially, but what am I going to do? I'm going to keep managing the short call, but I only have to manage it on one position, not in 15. Okay, that's where it is. But again, that's all I can say on this. That's all I'm going to say on this. Max, it's up to you. You have the ability here, as I mentioned in the email, on the calendar call or on the dynamic caller to run your what-if scenarios, run your expectations, different days to expiration, see what the gain and loss is, that final decision is yours. I've given you my thoughts. That's all I can give. I don't do it. I don't do horizontal spreads, period. I trade calendar spreads, diagonal slash poor man's covered calls, on stocks that I can't afford to do as a married put position. It's a higher price stocks. And like I did NVIDIA as a calendar spread went before the split because I couldn't afford to do it as a married put personally. We're taking up too much of my portfolio. So I will do calendar calls as an approach similar to the married put. Okay. And, and that's your answer, Max. I'm going to be honest with everyone. I've said exactly what I said. I've said all I can say. And Max's final thought is, given the same PL risk reward, I do not see the convenience in putting 4000 at work. That's your choice. I've just given you my thoughts. I've given you the examples of the risk reward, the fear of gambler's ruin, the potential of getting trapped in the martingale. That's for me. I, I'm, I'm giving you what I can give you, Max. I can't give you any more. And if you don't like putting $4,000 into something that looks the same, then don't. I have people that have come on to Mary Put webinar and say, no, you're stupid. It's the same thing as the long call. I'm just going to go trade long calls. Okay, bye. It's not for you. I get it. <laughs> I trade similar positions like this. I trade long calls too. We're saying with an approach that we like. 